Love it or hate it, iPads are here to stay on the bandstand. So, you might have been in a situation where you set the charts, you get on the gig, and it looks something like this, and you are straining on that tiny little screen to see what the notes are. It's a complete nightmare. But there is an alternative, and that's what I'm here to teach you today. Your charts could look like this instead. What a difference, I'm sure you'll agree, this is night and day. We're gonna get straight into it today, no messing around, I'm gonna give you all the details you need about iPad charts. Uh, and I've also got a free PDF cheat sheet that you can use using the link there. It's even got a Sibelius template for my formula for iPad charts, which is now industry standard. So go and use the link down there. Let's sort out how to get your charts looking good. First of all, you need to break your paradigm about what written music looks like if you're using an iPad. Number one, an iPad screen is not the same proportions as A4 paper. It's wider, so your A4 charts will not fit an iPad screen properly. Number two, you do not need any margins. Guess what? There's a little band around the side of your iPad and that is the margin. <laughs> All right, you don't need any page margins. You don't need any DSs or coders because they are just to save paper. You can have a chart with a million pages. It doesn't matter. It's all digital. <laughs> Next, you don't need to have long repeats. Little, you know, four or eight bar repeats, no problem. But you don't need big long repeats. Again, that is just to save paper. You don't need to fill each sheet of your iPad on the chart with music. You can turn pages as much as you want, whatever it suits you, because it doesn't matter how many pages the chart is. And also, you don't need to have teeny weeny little staves. Be generous with the size of your staves. So let's get into the nitty gritty. If you are producing charts for an iPad, here are the golden numbers. First of all, the most important thing of all is the custom page size. It's not A4, it's not letter, it's nothing like that. You need to make it custom. 148 millimeters uh, width by 197 millimeters tall. 148 by 197 millimeters and make your staves seven millimeters tall. That is perfect and it doesn't matter if you've got an iPad mini or a big iPad, those proportions will just scale up nicely. Next, your page margins, okay? 0 0.5 millimeters on each side, teeny little sliver, and 10 millimeters at the top and the bottom. And finally, your staff margins, which is the distance that the staves fall within the page. The first page, you want it to be about 50. That gives you plenty of space for your title. Zero at the bottom. After the first page, you want it to be about five, not very much at all, with zero again at the bottom. Remember, you've still got that 10 millimeter uh, page margin. So if you do that, your page will look like this. Isn't that gorgeous? That is a pleasure to read. <laughs> now, once you get your iPad charts dialed in and they start looking like a pleasure to read, here are some important considerations if you're using an iPad on a gig. First of all, use a Bluetooth page turner with your iPad. I've got a cool little foot pedal and you just turn the page one foot is to go forward, one foot is to go back. But there are other options. I also have a Bluetooth page turner, which is like a ring that goes in your finger. I've tried to fit it at various clever places on the saxophone, but I keep coming back to the foot pedal. So don't be always leaning over to touch your iPad screen. It's a hassle. Get yourself a Bluetooth page turner. Number two. Don't put, your, don't put your iPad on a music stand on stage. What's the point? You need to get an iPad clamp that fixes onto your microphone stand or a separate uh, mic stand, and it'll keep the stage looking really clean and lovely. Don't bring a huge music stand to put your iPad on. It's a waste of time. Number three, there's nothing worse than playing uh, iPad roulette <laughs> with how long your battery will last on a gig. Get yourself a power cord for your iPad and make sure it's really long because there probably won't be a plug anywhere near you, uh, you know, like with a normal length charging lead. Number four, lock the orientation of your iPad screen to portrait, which is upright mode. And if you do your charts the way I've told you, they will look beautiful. You'll never need to be in landscape. And also you'll never need to do iPad, you know, turning half a page at once because all your page turns will be beautiful. Because remember, you don't have to fill the page. You just do a new page whenever you've got time to turn the page. It doesn't have to be a full page. So lock your, or lock your orientation as portrait. Number five, Make sure you've got Do Not Disturb on your iPad during a gig or put it in uh, airplane mode because you don't want your emails and notifications to be coming up as you're playing your gig. Not cool. Number six, consider getting yourself an Apple Pencil because when you're marking up charts on uh, iPad, it's really helpful and it feels really natural. Uh, the best software to get, by the way, is for score for your iPad. That is the industry standard, really powerful, great, solid, software to read your PDFs. Finally, 
Make sure that you get your iPad kind of out the way. Don't have that iPad up in front of your face. Because if you're on a gig, you know, and the, <laughs> and the iPad's right in front of you, it just looks rubbish. So get that iPad down low so that people can still see you playing. And if you do your charts, like I've told you, you'll still be able to read it really very easily. Once again, remember to go and get your cheat sheet. That's got all these points listed in it. It's got the name of the software for score that you can use. And it's also got that Sibelius template that you can use to create beautiful charts with my patented industry standard chart format. You are welcome. So I hope today has been a useful <laughs> a useful lesson. Not very much to do with playing saxophone, I must admit, but it's a video I've wanted to do for years because it's a real bugbear of mine when you're trying to read these, these parts on a gig and they are tiny, especially when you start getting old like me and your eyes aren't so good. <laughs> In the meantime, if you have bought me a coffee, I very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. You can buy me one using the link that you can see there. I've also got an awesome free uh, saxophone success masterclass so go and help yourself to that that is going to really help you with your practice tips and tricks improvising the law is absolutely awesome until next week i really appreciate you and practice hard practice smart and enjoy your music see you later <laughs> one night oh, oh my golly gosh <laughs>